Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's lecture. We're going to be learning today how to uh, name organic compounds, and we're going to learn a bit about some of the organic reactions that produce different families of chemical compounds. So some of the <clears throat> basic rules I'm going to go over here are, uh, for instance, if we're naming an alcohol, we have a principal functional group. Uh, we use the uh, suffix ol. If it's a ketone, we use O-N-E. Those are just two examples. So we have to identify the longest continuous chain in the molecule that we're naming uh, first, and then we identify um, substituent groups that are attached to that carbon chain, and we alphabetize them. And sometimes there's more than one um, substituent group, like there could be two methyls, so we call it a dimethyl, or there could be three ethyls, we call it a triethyl. We have to number them where they are on the chain. So, and that's what the locants are, are the numbers on the chain. So, in the example here, two ethyl, uh, sorry, spelling mistake there, should be a, an L there. So, three ethyl, two methyl octane. The longest chain is eight carbons for octane. It's, uh, it's aliphatic, meaning all single bonds. That's what the A and E tells us. On the second carbon from the end, we have a one carbon side chain. And on the third carbon from the end, we have a two carbon side chain. So that's what we're going to be studying in detail. So um, here's an example. You, you won't ever be asked to name something this complicated, but nonetheless, I'm going to use a complicated example just to kind of show you where we're going to go. In this case, uh, the, the chain number, uh, we cited a number from this end simply because the functional group double bond O is a, is a carbonyl group. It's a, a ketone if it's in the middle of a chain. So this is a dione because there's two of those functional groups there. And there's also a methoxy over here, which is an ether side chain. There's a chloro and a bromo. So just to show you here, if it's a 23 carbon chain, we call it a tricosane. So cos is for 20, tri means three. So 23 is the parent chain is 23 carbons long. So the name for this, here it is, it's a mouthful. So we're gonna understand how these work and I'm just gonna show you here. On the 18th carbon, there's a halogen side chain, a bromo. Notice how they're alphabetized, bromo, butyl, chloro, ethyl. If it's a diethyl, you don't use the D, you use the E to determine the alpha, al, how you alphabetize it, and hydroxy. So the 12, uh, we've got some hydrocarbon side chains here as substituents. So 12-butyl means there's a four-carbon chain attached to the 12th carbon. And there's uh, two two-carbon chains, one attached to the fourth carbon, one attached to the eighth. And on the 11th carbon, there is a chlorine. On the fifth carbon, there's an OH group. Hydroxy in this case, it's, it's, uh, we're treating the alcohol like it's a side chain because of the presence of a, of a ketone here and here. And on the 15th chain, 15th carbon, we have a side chain that is uh, an ether side chain. It's called meth oxy, meth for one carbon and oxy for the oxygen. And uh, tricose tells us there's 23 carbons in the chain. And there's double bonds between the 6th and 7th and between the 13th and 14th carbons. And there's a triple bond between the 19th and the 20th carbon. That's why there is a YNE. And as I mentioned before, on the 3rd carbon and on the ninth carbon, there is a ketone. So that's named a dione because there's two of them. All right, so that's kind of like where we're headed. Right now we have alkane. Uh, in this case, hex means six carbons. It's an aliphatic chain, all single bonds. This is a uh, compressed formula here, or condensed, sorry, condensed formula, CH3, followed by uh, four CH2s and another CH3 in the end. You can see in the second example here, um, pentene, they, <coughs> We have a double bond between the first carbon and the second carbon. Now, in, in, the, 
in alkanes, the general formula is the number of hydrogens is always double the number of carbons, and you add two hydrogens for the two N carbons, where you get the CH3s. So in this case, hexane would be C6H14, because we double six, we get 12, and add two, we get 14. So here's a list of the various uh, alkanes that are common here. Notice one carbon. We start with meth and eth and prop, bute, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec, and then for 20, ecos, and then tri contain is 30. Now, you're not required to know 20 and 30, but you are required to know up to 10. And you can see the boiling points here increase. Um, as the number of carbons increase, because there's greater forces between the molecules, as they get bigger, there's more London dispersion forces. So, and they also, as the chains get longer, they get tangled up, making it more difficult to, uh, to separate them. So you can see that the uh, higher melting and boiling points, you can see that from carbons one to four, uh, they are gases at room temperature and above Four, you get liquids at room temperature from five carbons to 16 carbons. And then uh, when they're more than 16 carbons, they exist, the forces are so strong, they exist as kind of waxy solids. So now when we name the hydrocarbons, we're gonna select the longest possible chain uh, and name it accordingly. So for instance, if we see pentane, we can see that there's five carbons in this chain. And that's what pent means. Ane means they're all single bonds. And N simply means it's normal. There's no branching of the chain. So here's N pentane. So now if we have, a, in this case, we have a branch on our chain. So we have the longest chain is four carbons. There's a one carbon branch coming off of it. So when we name this, that's gonna be a methyl group. Uh, we simply put YL on the end and we're going to name this 2-methyl-butane because there is a one carbon side chain coming off the second carbon. Now, um, we're going to do some more here. So <clears throat> if we have multiple uh, side chains, we use the prefixes di, tri, or tetra to identify them, and we use numbers to indicate where they are. We separate the numbers with commas, and we put the chains alphabetically. So. Um, <laughs> And, and this example, we have seven carbons, so it's going to be called heptane. The letter N simply means there's no branches. It's straight chain. In this example here, it's called methylbutane um, because there's a one carbon side chain. We don't really need to number it simply because there's only one place on a butane chain. You can either put it on this carbon or this carbon, but it's still going to be the second carbon. So that's why we can just call it methylbutane. Now in this instance here, we can see the longest chain is five carbons. So that's going to be a pentane. And we can see that we have uh, a side chain on the second. There's two on the second carbon, and there's one on the fourth carbon, which corresponds to two, two, four. We select numbers that give the lowest possible number. In other words, we wouldn't go, we wouldn't number this one one and this one two because then we'd end up with numbers 244, four, which is bigger than 224. So that's the rule about the lowest possible numbers. Uh, <clears throat> so again, there's three one carbon side chains. That's why we call it a trimethyl, on the, two on the second and one on the fourth. Now, here are some more examples here. If we have uh, three five diethyl octane, the parent chain is going to be eight carbons. There's two, two carbon side chains attached to the third carbon and the fifth carbon. So when we look at the diagram, here it is. Octane eight, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you can see. And uh, now you can see on the third carbon, there's a two carbon side chain. On the fifth carbon, there's also a two carbon side chain. So that's why we name it diethyl. Now the second example here, on the second carbon, we have a chlorine, and on the third carbon, we have a methyl, and it's a five carbon main chain, so pentane. And third example on the page here, we have a heptane, so there's going to be seven carbons, 
in the in this parent chain and we have a methyl attached to the second a methyl another methyl on the second and we have a methyl on the fifth and another methyl uh sorry on the fifth and another methyl on the sixth so that gives you the tetramethyl heptane now we can actually branch those side chains and when we branch the side chains again we're going to use yls on those branching side chains um, so uh, Propyl is three, uh, butyl is four. So, so when we look at this example here, we can see on the fourth carbon, there's a propyl heptane. And uh, the old name for this used to be isopropyl, meaning that it was joined in the middle of the chain. But the rule we're gonna uh, teach you is to simply name the side chain. So on the fourth carbon, there's a branch side chain, and that's why there's a bracket here indicating it's a branch side chain. On the first carbon of the side chain, there is a one carbon branch, and that's why we call it methyl. And then because there's two carbons here, we call it ethyl. So, so a one methyl ethyl simply means on the first carbon, there's a methyl groups attached to the two carbon ethyl. And the parent chain is seven carbons, so it's a heptane. So on the fourth carbon is where that branching happened. Okay, and just to verify what I've just said, there it is. Now, name this one. So we can see this one is three carbons. It's a propane. There's a carbon attached to it. Now, we don't really need to use a number in this case, do we? Because there's only one place to put a side chain if it's only three carbons long. So you would just call that methylpropane. In this case, uh, when it's four carbons, again, the methyl group can be on this, uh, can only be in either this carbon or this carbon. Uh, in this case here, we're gonna, we're gonna, we call this 2,2-dimethylpropane uh, or simply dimethylpropane. Numbers aren't really necessary because there's only two, one place they could go. So in this case, D, you can see that it's, we find the longest possible chain. Um, in this case, the longest possible chain, if we went this way, we would have a branched hydrocarbon. But in this case, we're, if, we, if we select this as our longest chain, we can avoid the branched. And when we number the chain, we number it so we encounter uh, the side chains with the lowest possible numbering group. So we're gonna number it that way. And now on the fifth carbon, we have an ethyl, sorry. On the fifth carbon, we have an ethyl. On the second carbon, we have a methyl, another second carbon methyl. And on the, on the sixth carbon, we also have a methyl. So that's where you get the 226 trimethyl and the parent chain is a heptane. So let's draw structural formulas for each of these. What you could do is just pause and then try them on your own and then start it up again. So I'm going to continue here. Hexane is simply six carbons in an aliphatic chain. And now we're going to show you that we have a branching side chain. We have eight in our parent chain on the fourth carbon on our chain, which is this one. We have a branching side chain. So we have a propyl side chain with two branches on the first carbon. That's where the 1,1-dimethyl propyl comes from. Uh, in this example here, again, we have a branching side chain. We have a pentane. So the pentane is this five carbon chain. On the third carbon, we have a branching side chain. The branching side chain is a methyl ethyl branching side chain on carbon number three. And the methyl group is on the first carbon. So it's a one, three, one methyl ethyl pentane. Uh, this example, we have four carbons in our parent chain and we have a carbon attached to uh, each side of the second carbon. And two, three dimethyl butane, we have four carbons in our parent chain and we have a methyl one carbon chain attached to the second and the third carbon. Now, we can also have uh, ringed structures where the carbons kind of uh, join up like a dog chasing its tail, it catches its tail. And when that happens, we eliminate two hydrogens. And so the formulas for uh, allicyclic 
compounds, uh, if we know how many carbons there are, if there's five carbons, for instance, like a cyclopentane, uh, we would find the number of hydrogens by simply doubling the number of carbons. So if it's car five carbon um, allocyclic compound, it's gonna, going to be C5H10. So now cyclopropane here is shown. Here we have three carbons, so C3H6. And uh, just to show you, there is no overlap of the atomic orbitals here at 60 degrees, rather than the normal 120, which puts significant stress on, this, on these bonds. So cyclopropane is rather unstable. Now again, to show you, here's propane. And if, uh, like the dog catching its tail, if these two N carbons join together, we have to eliminate two hydrogens. And we've done that here. So there is your cyclopropane, another way to show it. So when you're naming cyclic alkanes, uh, you simply going to use a cyclo in the name. So for instance, if it's four carbons, it's cyclobutane, six carbons, cyclohexane. <clears throat> now we can have also substituents or branches on the ring and we're gonna number, number them so we minimize the value of the numbers used. So we're gonna, and you're going to alphabetize these side chains attached. So we're gonna show you that in a minute. So give you an example here. So cyclohexane means there's six carbons in a ring. On the first carbon, there's a two carbon side chain. On the third carbon, there's a one carbon side chain. So this is how you would show it. So this is carbon number one, and this would be carbon number three. So on the first carbon again, there's an ethyl side chain. And on the third carbon, there's a one carbon side chain. And the fact that there's six in the, in the um, molecule joined together, that's where we get the cyclohexane. Now, uh, we have some more examples here. If it's a 1,3-methyl cyclohexyl heptane, in this case, the parent chain is seven carbons long, and there is a cyclical structure named as a side chain because the parent chain heptane is longer than the six carbons in the cyclo substituent. So in this case, we're gonna number it like that. You can see where the three methyl cyclohexyl comes from. This whole thing is a cyclohexyl. It's attached to the first carbon, which is where the one and cyclohexyl come from. And the parent chain again is seven carbons. That's where we get the heptane. <laughs> and we number the parent chain accordingly. Now we can also have unsaturated hydrocarbons where we have double or triple bonds in the chains. <clears throat> a common name for them for the compounds with double bonds are called olefins. The formula is CNH2N. So if it's a five carbon um, alkene, the formula would be C5H10. We have to remove two hydrogens when we create that extra bond. And if it's a triple bond, we have to remove two more hydrogens. So if it's an alkyne that has four carbons, the formula would be C4H6, because when we double it and subtract two, that's what we get. So again, here shows an example. Here is one pentene. Note that the number one indicates where the double bond is. The ENE tells us it's a double bond. A YNE tells us it's a triple bond. In this case, it's after the second carbon. So if I was going to come up with the formula for this one, it's C5H10. And for an octine, two octine, it would be C8H14. Now, when we name them, all we do when we name them is change the suffix name from A-N-E to E-N-E for alkenes to Y-N-E instead of A-N-E for alkynes. So, and the number of carbons, of course, in the parent chain dictates its name. So as we saw here, five pent. <clears throat> now we're gonna also uh, indicate the presence of where the double or the triple bond is with a number, okay? So here's some examples here that we're gonna use. So here's a bunch of examples. And again, when we're naming them, 
You can see when we number this chain, it's going to uh, be numbered so that we encounter the double bond with the lowest possible number. First example here on the far right, you can see the parent chain with the double bond, the longest parent chain with the double bond is five carbons. We went this way, it would only be four. That's why we numbered it from left to right. And the there is a on the second carbon, there is a two carbon side chain. That's where the two ethyl comes from. And the double bond is between the first and the second carbon, which is why we call it a one pentene. And the side chain is on the second carbon. It's an ethyl side chain. The one below it, again, we locate the longest chain that has the triple bond in it, and we name it pentine. The triple bond is between the second and third carbon, so it's a two pentine. There is a one carbon branch off the fourth carbon, where that's where you get the four methyl. And the, the example I'm pointing at now, we can see it's four carbons. This is one butene. Over here on this side, we can also use prefix cis to indicate that the uh, hydrogens are on the same side of that double bond. In this case, we have five carbons. So that's where we get the pentene. The double bond is on the second carbon. Note that we numbered it from right to left instead of left to right because we encountered the double bond with a lower number. And trans, of course, means that the hydrogens are on opposite sides. So like in trans fats uh, that are created when you uh, manufacture solid fats from liquid oils. In the case of margarines, we sometimes make trans fats uh, accidentally, which cannot be broken down by the enzymes in our body, so they tend to accumulate. We now know them to have a destructive uh, effect on your health, so you're asked to avoid and minimize trans fats in your diet. So here are some examples you can try after doing this. I'm going to continue on the lesson, but uh, here's some homework. Please make sure that you practice some. Now we're going to start talking about reactions involving unsaturated hydrocarbons. So unsaturated hydrocarbons tend to be more reactive because that the double bond and the triple bond, the electrons that form that tend to uh, be shared above and below the plane of the carbons, further away from the carbon atoms. So they are more vulnerable to attack by reagents. So we're going to look at these various reactions here. One by one, we're going to study them. So the first example here, if we add hydrogen to an alkene, we end up with, uh, we end up with um, an alkane. So now addition reactions, we are going to take two molecules and join them together to make a bigger molecule. And uh, <clears throat> so in some cases, you uh, can't control whether you produce a cis or a trans two pentene. So here's an example of a catalyst called Lindler's catalyst. It's used to add hydrogen to an alkyne, in this case, two pentine. Uh, and we note that the hydrogens are on the same side in this example here. So we call it a cis two pentene, the product that's made. So now if we go back to that original figure that we showed, you can see that here is the pathway that we are investigating. We are adding hydrogen to an alkyne to make an alkene. Now, the hydrogen actually breaks one of these bonds to make the double bond. Now, during addition reactions, we can add new groups to the carbons. And if it's a, a molecule like bromine, the a one bromine that gets attached to each carbon atom. That's a simpler example here. So now the two bromine atoms are identical, so this is, becomes fairly easy to, to uh, predict what's going to happen. We could call this, uh, this is a symmetrical example of a reactant, Br2. <clears throat> now, if we're showing you where this occurs in this figure, we can see that there's an alkene here. And if we brominate it by adding bromine, we get a 1,2-dibromoethane. And again, the bromine atoms uh, are attached one to each carbon. 
Now, it is a bit of a problem whenever you're adding an asymmetrical reactant. In this case, hydrogen bromide. You have one hydrogen atom, one bromine atom. Where does the hydrogen go? Where does the bromine go? Well, there's a 50-50 probability that one ends up on one side, one ends up on the other. But in reality, that's not what happens. Um, there is a prediction that was uh, summarized by a man named Markovnikov, and he simply discovered that whenever you add an asymmetrical reagent to an alkene, that the carbon that has more hydrogens on it will be the one that ends up with the hydrogen atom. So in this case, this carbon has two hydrogens attached to it. This carbon only has one hydrogen attached to it. So the hydrogen is going to be attached to this carbon, and the bromine is going to be attached to this carbon. So again, there are two possibilities that exist, but uh, only one is going to actually happen. So we're going to get this particular result uh, in this table. We can see we're adding, it's an addition reaction where we're adding uh, hydrogen bromide here. So in this case, we are only going to produce this particular result. So propene is going to be changed in this case into 2-bromopropane. Now, um, you can find this particular reaction in this part of our figure. We have an alkene. Again, we're adding hydrogen. We break the double bond. And we made arenes. You can have double bonds within structures, like in this case, six carbon atoms. We've discovered when we analyze it that uh, the resonance structure don't quite fit the model. When we analyze the structure of these molecules, we discover that all the carbon atoms are bonded. The bond lengths are all equivalent. They're all the same. So uh, a better way of representing a six carbon structure called benzene is with this diagram. So now we could name it 1,3,5-cyclohexatriene, indicating there's three double bonds. But a simpler name for that is simply benzene. Or if it's a side chain, we call it phenyl. So now uh, we also name organic compounds sometimes. Uh, a, a methyl benzene is called toluene. Uh, and this was called orthoxylene. Uh, these are common names. You're not required to know the formulas for common names, but we are going to require you to know <coughs> the systematic names for these. So ortho simply means that the two side chains are, are adjacent, one beside the other. We use uh, other prefixes as well besides ortho. So this, I would expect you simply to name it as methylbenzene. This would be 1,2-dimethylbenzene. That would be the systematic name I expect you to come up with, not the common name. So you can have multiple rings attached together. For instance, there are common names, naphthalene and anthracene. And here are some examples of some um, aromatics. And we are going to show you some rules that we're going to follow here. So 3-bromotoluene and 2-chlorotoluene go by different names. Uh, ortho simply means the carbons, the substituent groups that are attached to the ring are side by side. Meta means they're separated by one carbon, as in this case. And para means they're separated by two carbons, as in this case. So we used to call this paradichlorobenzene. The para meaning the, the chlorines are on carbons that are separated by two. But we're going to only require you to know the systematic name. So 3-bromo-1-methylbenzene is, you can see if you can find it above here. So here it is over here. 2-chloro-1-methylbenzene would be this example here. Note that the side chains, again, are alphabetized. C comes before M, which is why we put the 2-chloro before the 1-methyl. So this example here would be 3-bromo-1-methyl-benzene. 
This example, it would be 2-bromo-1-chlorobenzene. Now, um, you certainly don't want to expose yourself to uh, benzene-type molecules. These are carcinogenic, and it's interesting to note that it's found in the uh, smoke that comes out of cigarettes, so not a good idea to really be inhaling cigarettes. Of course, we all know that. Um, people just kind of figure that out. Uh, when they smoke cigarettes, they notice that it has a terrible effect on their lungs. And <clears throat> Literally, in the petroleum industry, we make billions of kilograms of benzene are produced every year. And uh, we also can dehydrogenate them or dehydrogenate them. And we can also uh, uh, join hexane into a cyclical compound. Cyclization is that type of reaction. That's, and we use these benzene molecules to manufacture plastics and detergents and as an, an octane enhancer in gasoline. And we can also take hydrogen from these compounds uh, and we can use it to make ammonia in large quantities. We take nitrogen out of the air, we take hydrogen from petrochemicals, and we can make ammonia. One of the most widely carried out uh, reactions on the planet. So we're gonna start now on alcohols. So one way to produce an alcohol is to add water to an alkene. Hydration is another name for adding water. So you can see here, see if you can find it. Here's an alkene, here's an alcohol, we add water. So that's what we're gonna be, be investigating next. So in this case, we have a three carbon alkene. We're adding water to it. Notice that the hydrogen ends up on the carbon with the most hydrogens and the OH ends up on the other carbon. So we have created uh, an alcohol. How do we know it's an alcohol? Because of the presence of this OH group. So this we would call 2-methylpropene because it's got three carbons in the chain. It's got a methyl group on the second carbon. And this, we're going to name it as 2-methyl-1-propene. Um, but the one isn't necessary. So the compound that we've just created is three carbons. So it's going to be prop. It's an alcohol, so we use the suffix OL. The alcohol is on the second carbon, and the methyl group is also on the second carbon. So we have 2-methyl, two 2-propanol. Two so note, we used Markovnikov's rule to create the name and to also, sorry, to predict exactly which carbon had the hydrogen attached and which carbon had the OH group attached. Now, a tertiary alcohol is where a carbon that uh, where the OH group is attached is attached to three other carbons. This is an example of a tertiary alcohol. Now we also have secondary alcohols where the OH group, that's the carbon that the OH group is attached is attached to two other carbons or a primary alcohol where the carbon that the OH is attached to is attached to uh, no carbons or one carbon. So just to give you the difference between the terminology primary, secondary, and tertiary for alcohol naming. Now that becomes important when we actually react alcohols. We get a different result when we uh, oxidize primary alcohols than we do secondary alcohols, which we'll go into very shortly. Now, the dehydration reaction, again, you can find it on this chart. We can see that if we start with an alcohol and we take out uh, water, then we end up back at an alkene. So we can dehydrate an alcohol using heat and sulfuric acid to make an alkene. In this case, we took ethanol, or sorry, uh, 2-propanol, and we made propene out of it. Now, when we name alcohols, we're going to use the OL as the end of the name. And we're going to identify where the OH group is attached using a number. So 2-propanol tells us it's a three-carbon chain with an OH group on the second carbon. If it was on the first carbon, it would be 1-propanol. So now if it has more than one hydroxyl group, we can use a, a prefix like di for diols or 3-tri, triols or tetraols. In this case, 
Uh, this is common substance here is, is antifreeze we use in our automobiles to prevent uh, the uh, fluid from freezing <coughs> to cool the car. So note that there is an OH group on, on each carbon. So it's two carbons. So we name this 1,2-ethane diol. Common name, ethylene glycol. And here is another type of antifreeze, or not antifreeze, sorry. It's, uh, it's common name is glycerol. It's called 1,2,3-propentriol. Glycerol is an important starting point for manufacturing fats inside the body. Uh, it's a way we store energy. Glycerol uh, is one of the molecules used, and the other are fatty acids. So when we attach fatty acids to each of these OH groups through ester linkages, which we'll investigate later, we end up with triglycerides, which are the uh, fat molecules most frequently used by the body to store excess energy. When you eat too much, your body stores that excess fuel as triglycerides. So alcohol can also have side chains, and we can number uh, where the OH are using, for instance, this example here. If we have a pentane diol, it tells us that it's five carbons. There's an OH group attached to the second and third carbon, in this case, this carbon and this carbon, and there's a one carbon side chain attached on the fourth carbon. Note that when we numbered the chain, we numbered it so we encountered the alcohol group with the lower number. And here's another example. If I was gonna name this, I can investigate and see, oh, there's an OH group, there's a chlorine group. The chlorine group will be named as a side chain, the OH will be named as a alcohol. So we're gonna number the chain in this case. We encounter the OH group with the second carbon if we number it left to right. So we're gonna number it so we encounter the OH group with the lowest number. So when we name this, we're gonna alphabetize the chloro side chain and the methyl side chain. So now we're going to arrive at a name of one chloro, four methyl, two, three pentane, diol, five for pent, diol because there's two OH groups on the second and the third carbon. Now, ethers occur whenever we dehydrate alcohols. We, in other words, we take a water molecule out of an alcohol using a dehydrating agent like sulfuric acid. So if we have, for instance, two methanol molecules, meth, methanol because it's one carbon. So if we simply use a dehydrating agent like sulfuric acid and heat it a bit, we can actually dehydrate methanol to make this particular structure, which we're going to call methoxymethane. We're going to name an ether as a side chain. Okay, So if you can see where this is, on our chart, here's our alcohol. We're going to dehydrate our alcohol and we're going to make an ether. So we can use either the same alcohol or we can use different alcohols to make different types of ethers. So if I was going to name this particular ether, the longest carbon chain is named as a parent chain. In this case, it's two carbons. It doesn't matter which side. So it's going to be called an ethane. And there's a two carbon side chain with an oxygen. So we call that ethoxy. So we're simply going to name this ethoxy ethane is the systematic name. So going over the rules here, there's no need to use the number one. It's redundant. So ethoxy uh, <coughs> ethoxy ethane is the name for this ether. Now some other examples here using common names. Uh, <clears throat> this common name is dimethyl ether, diphenyl ether. Again, the phenyl is used to indicate it's a, a benzene ring, C6H6, and methyl phenyl ether. So methyl on one side, phenyl on the other. Those are the common names. The systematic names are what we're going to expect you to use. So we're simply going to call this methoxymethane. And we're, we could call this methoxybenzene. This is a benzene ring. We have a one carbon ether side chain. That's where the methoxy comes from. 
And again, note that, uh, as I mentioned before, a side chain of a benzene ring is called phenyl. Okay, phenyl side chains, C6H5. Now, characteristics of ethers. They are relatively uh, unreactive because that linkage is quite strong. They can be used as anesthetics. I know when I got my tonsils out as a young boy, I was given ether and I was very sick the next day, which is why we've replaced that as an anesthetic for the most part. We can also use ethers as propellants in aerosol sprays and they sometimes use them to get old farm equipment going. You spray ether into the engine and it, it uh, combusts uh, very vigorously when you can't get the gasoline to start. Ether sometimes is used. Ethers are also a problem for pollution because they're quite soluble in water. They can contaminate our groundwater. So now we're going to show you how you can use it, how we can make ethoxyethane from methane. So we start from ethane. We can take hydrogens or dehydrogenate or dehydrogenate, however you want to say that word. And we're going to make an alkene. Then we take the alkene and we can uh, then add water to it and we make an alcohol. And from the alcohol, we can dehydrate the alcohol using sulfuric acid and make our <clears throat> make our ether. So here's it showing it step by step. And we end up with our ether. Now, we would name that ethoxyethane because there's a two carbon ether side chain on a two carbon chain. Now, the homework uh, would be to read your textbook to basically summarize everything that I've gone over. And on problem set seven in your course pack, try these problems. One lecture left, guys. Looking forward to it. Take care.